Good evening, this is Friday, February 17th, 264 days until the 2012 presidential election. Rick Santorum tried to make the most of a sexist gaffe from a major financial supporter, while a Democratic senator wonders just which century we're in now. The fifth story on the countdown, Santorum backer billionaire Foster Freeze inserting himself in the contraception debate, yes, a contraception debate, in 2012 with this comment yesterday. This contraceptive thing, my gosh, it's, so, it's such inexpensive. You know, back in my days, they used bare aspirin for contraceptives. The gals put it between their knees, and it wasn't that costly. Santorum with Charlie Rose on CBS this morning trying to distance himself from the remark from Mr. Freeze. It was a bad joke. It was a stupid joke. I'm not responsible for any comment that anybody who supports me make, and my record stands for itself. Santorum then accusing Rose in specific and the so-called liberal media in general of a double standard in his case. You don't do this with President Obama. In fact, in fact, with President Obama, what you did was you you went out and defended him against someone who he sat in a, in, in, in a church for 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 20 years and, and defended him that, oh, he can't possibly believe what he what he listened to for 20 years. And I'm joined by Craig Crawford, politics blogger at Craig Crawford dot com and the author of The Politics of Life. Craig, good evening. Hey, uh, call 1-800-80s uh, uh, hits, greatest hits of the 80s. <laughs> God, right. guns, and gays. That's We've been here before. <laughs> All right, well, so now, Rick Santorum, when we last left Rick Santorum, Mr. Freeze had just caused all sorts of problems for him. Did Batman get himself out of the jam with Mr. Freeze? <laughs> That's funny. I, I've been thinking Foster Freeze sounds like a villain on Batman. Yeah, seriously. Well, you know, I, I really do think, you know, he, he has an argument that, you know, this is a supporter who he can't be responsible for what he says. But saying Foster Freeze is just a supporter, like saying Dwight Eisenhower was just a bureaucrat on D-Day. I mean, this guy is funding so much of his campaign and they're putting him out there in interview after interview. I mean, I don't know what happened to not consulting, coordinating between campaigns. He's out there like his press secretary. So this is not just a supporter. Yeah. What, the, the premise that he is nothing to do with Santorum. Um, we wouldn't know who he was if it weren't for Santorum <laughs> in the campaign. Correct? Am I wrong about that? Does he have a game yeah. show on a network somewhere? Yeah, We're going right. to continue. Yeah. Was he? Was he? Was he in fact on Batman in the sixties? Did he play <laughs> Mr. Freeze? I thought. I'm thinking that was Otto <laughs> Preminger, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm entertained by the guy, actually. Yeah. I mean, I, I love these billionaires when they get in politics. They say anything and they keep us entertained. Uh, the reference to Jeremiah Wright and the controversy in attacking the press and the president today, the, the president diffused that fairly well four years ago, despite having to live with it right through to the uh, inaugural and beyond. Did Santorum do himself any favors, even in his own uh, community, by bringing this back? You know, I've been thinking, Keith, it, it, the, the problem with this Republican primary campaign and these candidates is they think the whole, and maybe this is true in the primary, but they think this campaign is 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 all about the Fox universe, that if they just yeah. win the Fox anchors, uh, if they just please Sean Hannity, uh, they're going to win, you know, and, and of course, that's a great issue to please him with, with uh, Jeremiah Wright, and I really sense that, you know, I, I, I collect my vomit bags from my airlines and, and watch Fox all the time, <laughs> and, and, and these candidates are are on there all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's, they're like campaigning on Fox uh, for the for this for this primary, and so I, I think Fox, in some ways, has done a disservice to to the Republican Party because it militarizes uh, these social conservatives, and then come November, uh, you know, people run for their lives. I mean, the marginal voters who hear this stuff. Yeah, I, I have to. Uh congratulate you on being able to watch it all day i've tried to do it try to keep <laughs> it in keep easy. it on in, in the office with the sound down i can't i can't do it uh, santorum and the prospect of having the election based on a culture war he might be comfortable going into that war unarmed as he is but what about mitt romney is that is that something that romney would embrace if they were actually going to try to because they're going to have to turn to something unless the economy goes back in the opposite direction because the possession arrow is now on the president's side of this equation well, I mean, here's what's happening. You know, it, when Republicans can campaign on the economy against a, a president facing a lousy job reports, everything they 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 stay on the old axiom that 
in politics, you reach the voter's heart through their wallet. Uh, when that's not working, they go for the Bible. And, and that's an old story. And, and that's kind of what's happening now. And that is going to be a very uncomfortable place for Mitt Romney. I, I don't think he knows how to do that. And it's going to be a very awkward thing for him to do to get off the economic issues. And uh, Santorum plays right into it. it, it it's something that is, I, I actually think the White House, you know, I, I was sort of out on a limb early in the contraceptive debate saying, hey, this is good for, even when Democrats were saying this is, the White House made a mistake, I was thinking, this is great for the Democratic Party to make contraceptives and birth sure. control an issue, uh, and it's good for Santorum in this primary campaign, but down the road, my goodness, I, I, yeah. I just don't see anything good about it for the Republican Party in November. Plus, once you're at this point, you're talking about banning contraceptives or limiting them at this point, later on in the campaign, you're going to have to advance to taking the vote back from women. So yeah, if I mean, they, they have to escalate it, that's the other problem. I mean, they got to take us back to pre-gun smoke days to, to, to win this stuff. Yeah, well, at least to pre to Batman, the TV series. And I to, yeah. I was right. Otto Preminger was Mr. Freeze, but also Eli Wallach and George Sanders were Mr. Freeze. <laughs> I don't remember go. that particularly well. In any event, Craig Crawford of The Politics of Life, CraigCrawford.com, and not uh, Mr. Freeze in the 1966 <laughs> Batman series. Thank you, Craig. Have a good weekend. Good weekend.